Hi everybody and thank you for joining me again on another episode of Gaffer and Gear. I really do appreciate you watching, otherwise there's no point in me making these episodes. Today we're having a look at this massive Nanlux accessory that is made for the Evoke series of lights. This is their parallel beam reflector. Okay, let's start off the episode without the usual regular disclaimers. I am not getting paid any money to do this review, and at the end of the episode, I don't get to keep the product. This is the only one in Australia, and it's required on a shoot in Queensland in four days' time. Now, it takes three days to get it shipped up there because Australia is a massive country. So at the end of the episode today, this has got to be packed up and got to be out of here. So just some uh, limitations in regard to that. I haven't had time to test this on anything other than the 2400B. So I haven't tested it on the rest of the Evoke range. And I also don't have time to take brightness readings at various CCTs. All of the readings are taken at 5600 Kelvin. Now the next thing I wanna point out throughout the entire episode, all of the brightness readings are taken at 400 ISO. Now, if you're working in close range with this thing at full power, 400 ISO is a ridiculous ISO to be taken readings at, but this is designed for long throws. And on those long throws, 400 ISO makes sense. I didn't want to change ISO halfway through the episode because I have found in the past that that confuses people. All right, so let's quickly go over cost and what you get for your money. And I was really quite surprised at how expensive this thing is. So just having a look online, it's listed for about two and a half thousand US dollars. And in Australia, it's listed for typically $4,300. So that's quite a bit of money. So what do you get for that money? Well, of course you get the parallel beam reflector, you get the massive bag that it comes in, and you get a cap to put over the back. Now let's go over some of the features. It has feet on the front so that when you take it off the light, you can put it face down onto the ground. It also has two feet on the back so that you can rest it on the ground without having to pack up the snoot. We'll talk about the snoot in a minute. It also has a Perspex cover to keep insects out and also give you weather protection. Otherwise, if you pointed this thing upwards in the rain, it would become the world's most expensive bucket. And on the back, it has two large carry handles to assist you with mounting. Now in terms of the pros and cons, we'll go over those as we do in the episode, but one con for me is this thing is fully locked off and it does have a bit of play in it. So if you're looking to lock this thing off permanently, say you're working for several days and you want the beam angle to be exactly the same, you're definitely gonna need to deploy some magic arms onto the back. Now in terms of a pro, this thing might be very large, but it is very lightweight. It is under 10 kilograms. So one person by themselves can very easily take this off and put it back onto the light. Okay, so let's talk about what we've got here. So they call this the parallel beam reflector, but it's not actually parallel. It's a six degree beam. So why didn't they call it a six degree reflector? Well, my guess is if you're using this in close range, it doesn't act like a six degree reflector would. It's sort of a compromise somewhere of the two. All right, so let's talk about how this thing works. So we've got a lot of baffolding in the middle. So that baffolding there is to take the direct light that's coming off the COB and contain that to the six degree beam that the reflector is doing. So without the baffolding, you could arguably have a 45 degree reflector with an insane hotspot, or you'd have a six degree reflector with an insane amount of drop off. Now here's the thing with the baffolding. The reason it's in this section here and not all the way out to the edges is it needs to keep this section clear so that the reflector can do its job. Now, because these sections here don't have baffolding, the baffolding is not doing a job of stopping stray light coming through here. So you can see light hitting me directly. Now to compensate for this, what they have is these four carbon fiber barn doors that fold out. Now these doors are flexible. So you just bend them in and Velcro them together to create a snoot. And now we don't have any stray light out of our six degree beam. Now let's talk about the reflector and at the distance I'm standing in, you can't even see it. Now, if I go back a little bit further, you can see the reflector reflecting on itself. 
Now, if I go back even further, we can start to see the COB reflecting in the reflector. Now, if I keep moving further back, the reflection of the COB gets magnified. So this means that the reflector doesn't hit its optical efficiency until you're a fair distance away. Now, to give you some idea of how far back I've walked, let's pull out wide. So what that means at a close distance is this reflector's drop-off is totally different to your other reflectors. So this could trip you up if you're not anticipating it. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. So let's say we're shooting a soft drink commercial and we're doing it at high speed, thousands of frames per second. So we've got a glass of soft drink, we've got ice cubes falling in, we want the splashes and super slow, slow motion, we want all the bubbles in slow motion. What you'd probably be anticipating is if you've got a 30 degree spot reflector, that won't be as bright as the six degree reflector here but that's not the case if you're working in close. So let's take a look at why this doesn't work. So if we've got our glass and we've got it one meter away from the parallel beam reflector here, we're only getting the light from the COB and the baffold. We are not getting any collection at this distance from the reflector. All of the light coming out of the reflector is going over the top or underneath or around and not onto the product. So if we did a shoot, with a glass like this at a distance of one meter, you would actually get four times more light out of the 30 degree dish than you would out of the parallel beam reflector. So let's go over the numbers. At a distance of one meter at 400 ISO, I was getting F90 and 1 10th off the 30 degree reflector. And it was so bright that I couldn't get a lux reading. On the other hand, the parallel beam reflector was only giving me F32 and 1 10th. Now let's do the same test, but go a bit further back. So just a reminder, at a distance of one meter, this was four times brighter than the parallel beam reflector. But at a distance of three meters, the parallel beam reflector is 51% brighter than the 30 degree reflector. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So one meter is on the left side and three meters is on the right side. As you can see, the 30 degree reflector has dropped off quite substantially, as you would expect. After all, it is three times the distance away but the parallel beam reflector has actually increased in brightness over this distance. It's over double the brightness at three meters than it was at one. And that's because everything is starting to merge together at that distance. Now let's have a look at how it performs optically. At a distance of one meter, everything is a mess. At a distance of two meters, you get an obvious donut in the center of the beam and the color distribution is splotchy but at a distance of three meters, that donut is gone and all of the color has merged together. Now here, you can see just how collected the beam is. With the baffold and the carbon fiber snoot, there is next to no spill light. However, at three meters, the shadows are unusable. All right, so let's open the roller door and take a look at the shadows at a distance of 12 meters. And there's definitely some double shadowing. Now here I'm flashing the light on and off to give you an idea of how much intensity there is. So now it's becoming clear to me that the longer the throw, the better the parallel beam reflector performs. So I decided to get the longest throw I possibly could in my townhouse by putting the light on the nature strip and taking the readings at the back of the house. That's a distance of 16.9 meters. Let's start off with the 30 degree reflector first. Now just a few things to note here. We're getting light bouncing off the ceiling, bouncing off the walls, and bouncing off the floor. This is going to affect the reading, so they're not going to be 100% accurate. One thing I love about this reflector at a distance is how the shadows do look like sunlight. And even though the shadows are terrible with this reflector at close range, at a distance they're really good. Now let's have a look with the parallel beam reflector. And the first thing that struck me is the shadows don't look like sunlight. And there's definitely some double shadowing. At a distance of three meters, this reflector was only 51% brighter than the 30 degree dish. But at this distance, it's two and a half times brighter. 
So I think in order to see what this parallel beam reflector can do, I'm gonna to need to test in a bigger area. And I think my local park should do it. I've put markers down at five meter intervals between five meters and 50 meters for me to take my readings. This is where the light is. And this is the 50 meter marker. And to keep things nice and quiet when the sun goes down, I'm running off an EcoFlow Delta. Now at dusk, I was really surprised at how much light I was getting at a distance of 30 meters. Okay, so it's almost dusk here. So the sun's on the horizon. I'm 50 meters away from the light. And this is what it's doing. Now it's not dark enough to take my exposure readings yet, but it is dark enough to see if the shadows improve over distance. I'm gonna take a look at the shadow qualities as best I can. So pretty ordinary at about five meters. There's a lot of double shadowing going on. Okay, so this is at 10 meters. There's still a lot of double shadowing. 15 meters. So at 15 meters, we've still got a fair bit of double shadowing going on there. So now I'm at 25 meters. There's still some definite uh, soft shadowing around the edge there. So it still doesn't quite look like sunlight to me at a distance of 25 meters. Now this is the shadows at 30 meters. Okay, so this is the shadows at 35 meters. Still a bit of soft edging there, even at 35 meters away. Still a little bit soft around the edges, but definitely a good shadow. Now this is all the way out at 50 meters and we've still got some very soft double shadowing, but the shadows, I think you could definitely convince someone that that's sunlight. Now the reflector is starting to show its worth, but it is obvious over this distance that it's not a true parallel beam. You can definitely see the six degree spread. Now just to note, all of the readings are taken at 5,600 Kelvin. I didn't have time to take readings at other CCT values, because the council wouldn't let me have the light turned on after eight o'clock at night. Now the first column is the distance at which the readings are taken. The second column is the lux value from the parallel beam reflector. The third column is the lux value from the 30 degree reflector. And the final column is the difference between the two. So for example, at five meters, the parallel beam reflector is 2.58 times brighter than the 30 degree reflector. Now the reason I decided to do a comparison is so that we can see when the parallel beam reflector hits its optimal efficiency. And the reflector seems to be working at its optimum from about 20 meters onwards. And the G-spot for maximum difference seems to be at about 35 meters. Now one of my go-tos if I need a lot of light through a blade frame is the 2400B. But instead of using it with a wide reflector close in to the diffuser, I use it with the 30 degree reflector a little bit further back and that gives me more light level. So that got me thinking, if I use the parallel beam adapter even further back, going through a four x four blade frame, would that give me any more brightness? And the answer is no. Positioning the light at a distance where both reflectors will give you roughly the same amount of distribution across the diffuser, you get 80% more light level out of the 30 degree reflector. Now, some of you might be wondering how well this would perform with a decent reflector system such as the Lightbridge. Well, I don't have time to test that and I also don't have a decent Lightbridge setup. So I'm gonna leave that to the capable hands of John Roach over at the YouTube channel, Gaffer's Salon. So if you haven't been over to his channel, make sure you click like and subscribe. He's got one of these on the way to him soon to do his own review. Now, for those people who are curious, during the setup in here, I have the light here set at 0.1% brightness, and I've got it blasting it into a floppy, and all the other lights in the workshop here are running at 100%. Now, just my closing thoughts, this does seem like a lot of money, but if it is compatible with the Evoke 5000 that's coming out next year, then that money would be justifiable for a lot of people. But if you need something like this, maybe it is justifiable. Let me know in the comments below. Now, I do feel a bit out of place doing this review because I've never used anything like a mole beam. So I've got nothing to directly compare this to in terms of my experience as a gaffer. The only lights that I had that had a six degree beam are the old school HMIs that I used to own 
back at the turn of the century. So back in around the year 2000, I owned 1.2K HMI PARs and 4K HMI PARs. And those lights back then had lenses that you dropped in to change the beam angle. But if you didn't have a lens in and you put the globe into the spot position, you got a six degree beam. And those things were insanely bright. Now to give you some idea of how these compare to those, and I'm just going off my gut feeling and my memory, this feels about twice as bright as the 1.2K HMI, and it feels about half the brightness of a 4K HMI. But here's the advantages this has over those. It has a very clean beam edge. It's CCT tunable, in this case, green magenta tunable. It's dimmable and it's DMX cubable. But here's the main big difference. There is next to no heat, so this is way safer than the old technology that we used to have.